All right, so we're beginning. So, right now. Right, we, where's the board? <laughs> so does everyone know Prakash Maharaj and Prabash Maharaj? I introduce you to the whole world, right? These are my dear, dear friends, my yoga friends, my maestro friends. I think these are possibly the they are definitely top of the Christmas tree in terms of world musicians. They're like the fairies on the top of the tree. This uh, Fakash is like 10 times Eric Clapton. No disrespect to Eric. <laughs> no, not at all. But their uh, accomplishment as uh, not just musicians. I was very uh, sorry, and Prabash Maharaj, his son. 14 and 15 generations of family musicians whose job it is to duplicate the tradition of sound from their ancient place. Uh, when I first met Makash, Makash many years ago, he, he explained to me, this is not music, <laughs> this is Tantra, he said to me. And there's, what? Tan this, this is Tantra. Uh, he told me that this sound transforms the one who is present to it. You don't even have to understand it. You know, you just be in it. It's like a sound bath, you know, and it purifies the system. How it works is a total mystery. But what they say is that this was given to us. Our family was given this by Shiva you know, the source, the ancient source, and their ancestors uh, dutifully learned and then passed it on, and they pass it on, they pass it on, pass it on. These guys work tirelessly to give their music, their tantra, to the world, because they know that it, it is transformative to the one who is um, lucky enough to be in the presence of this tantra. So uh, we started working together and it was very interesting for us because we both recognized that it was the same activity that we were doing. Right? It's really from the same ancient wisdom culture. I'm doing it in teaching asana. Asana is tantra. If you're doing asana, you're in a tantric tradition of direct intimacy with reality, right? That is nothing but a nurturing force. Now, from their culture, they can speak of, you know, deity, and they, there's a whole language, uh, a religious uh, context or religious language that they can uh, speak from. But it's not necessary to have that language necessarily. When I say nurturing source, they might be talking specifically about deity, you know, Hindu. But that's not necessary because yoga is uh, not necessarily associated with that language. Yoga is totally universal to all uh, religious language, all philosophical frameworks. It's a separate dashana or philosophy that is applicable, however, to whatever your background is. So this is why it's, this is a very good opportunity to put this on film and make it available to people of all cultures. Buddhist, Islamic, Christian, Jewish, or just the, the Western lifestyle, you know? Uh, doesn't matter what your background is, we as human beings all desire connection, intimacy, you know, with the natural state, with our own reality. But this point of view is, this understanding of the Yoga Tantra, is that this reality, this life that we are, is nothing but a nurturing force. That's what it is. It is 
regeneration. Nature is, God is interested in only one thing, and that is regeneration, of producing one improved version of you on the planet before you go. The power of life, the power of motherhood, the power of fatherhood. What we found out is what they do and what I do is the same thing. This is teaching each of you how to embrace reality <laughs> that is nothing but a nurturing force. And they had a lovely experience years ago when we were working together to see, to come to America or New Zealand or Australia and find large groups of people sincere about their yoga tantra. And they were playing their tantra, their direct intimacy with nurturing source in the midst of that, and it was like, whoa, <laughs> here's a human possibility that we didn't know about. This absorbed connection to the natural state, this intimate oneness with reality in my own embodiment and this body's relatedness to its own experience, including you and me, you know, is a, is a sublimity, it's sublime, it's a wonder. It's, a hu it's definitely a human possibility that most of the world don't know about, sadly. But that's what we're fixing. People all over the world, anywhere, you can be in a bombed out city like Beirut. You could be anywhere on this planet Earth and you go inhale, exhale, oh my God, that feels better. I feel better. Ah, oh, thank you. And this is what we want. We want people anywhere and everywhere in, in maybe a, in apparent comfort or in a, a place that is very difficult on this earth and try this yoga. because it, it helps you, it'll make you feel better. There's a right yoga for every person, no matter who the person is. According to your body type, age and health, and cultural background, there is a right yoga for you. It, to be, we fit it to the cultural background that you're in. You know, it must be taken into account. As I said, you know, Christian, Muslim, Islamic, Buddhist, uh, atheist, you know, just the regular secular life offered in the West, you know, beer and sport and cigarettes, you know. If you're uh, sincere about life, which everybody is, you want this connection. Here is the problem. When mankind invented the written word, he simultaneously invented doctrine, right? And suddenly the ideals of human possibility became ideals, they became ideas, they became abstractions, right? So suddenly there was, an, the idea of enlightenment was there. Okay, we all get enlightened, we all become Buddhas, right? Or the idea of God realization is sublimely expressed in text, and then we all try to get that. Or we talk of meditation, and so we try to meditate. Right? The understanding of yoga is that these sublime human possibilities arise naturally, spontaneously, and unpredictably. You cannot make them happen, just like you can't put yourself to sleep you know, as a good idea. You just can't say, all right, I'm going to go to sleep. You can't willfully do it. It just happens naturally when the conditions are right. This word is, uh, is siddhi. It's a siddhi. This is what I got from my teacher, Krishnamacharya, that the higher, the so-called higher limbs of yoga arise naturally, spontaneously, you know, by grace they come. Siddhis are given by doing your yoga. 
The point is just intimacy. I want to be intimate with my own embodiment. Be, this is my most direct experience. This here. I move and breathe. See? In my own life. S strength, receiving. Exhale, strength. Receiving the inhale. It's as simple as that. It's all, and anybody, you can do this in Sudan or Iraq or Afghanistan or Tehran, <laughs> you know, anywhere, Los Angeles, anywhere on planet Earth, you can go inhale, exhale and feel the connection to this nurturing reality that is moving us, that is beating my heart, moving my breath and sex. I can do this. It is intimacy that is the point, right? Yogic intimacy. From this intimacy arises spontaneously, naturally, the siddhi of meditation, of clarity of mind, of enlightenment, of God realization. Suddenly I realize, oh my God, life is a nurturing force and we are all in it. You know? <laughs> Suddenly it comes like that. Not through a meditative effort. Not through residing as witness consciousness and reducing all experience. No. Yoga is to embrace your experience. And then we know the source of experience by that embrace. This is the yogic method. This is what the Buddha did, you see. The Buddha was in yogic culture. He left the palace. I reckon he should have stayed in the palace and used his position of power and influence to feed the people. <laughs> he noticed that people were suffering. <laughs> he should have fed them, given them their yoga, you know, had it talk to them. Not creating this huge dilemma out of life and trying to get enlightened um, by residing as witness consciousness and going into an all male, you know, Buddhist situation, you know trying to drop away experience, give up sex and all that. See, not that this historic person got him a... We don't know that he actually did that. See, that came later. 200 years later, the abstraction arose. The idea of meditation and enlightenment got invented. Written in text. Pushed around the empire by King Ashoka. Turned into a... You know, I mean, then, and then we know the story of Rome. That came a bit later, you see text, doctrine, abstraction, beautiful ideas used. <laughs> See? And the point that we're making, it, it was the ancient Tantra, prior to text, even prior to the written word, what Vakash and Prabash, what their family, where they came from, is each person's direct intimacy with the given reality is yoga. So yoga was like the ancient means, the ancient religious practice of wisdom culture prior to abstraction that allowed for the realization of what the text were raving on about later. You understand what I'm saying? So if we have been inspired by anything and certainly it's not, this is no disrespect for that, for abstraction. The, you know, the human mind can do that. We got very uh, capable of meaning, of the expression of meaning. It's a beautiful thing that we can do this. <laughs> but we've got to understand that those abstract ideas aren't the beginning and end of, you know. They're just ideas, beautiful ideas like God or enlightenment or love. You know, they're beautiful ideas. But the thing to understand is that it is our yoga, the ancient given means, the tantra of direct intimacy with all ordinary conditions that reveals source reality, that reveals the power, the nurturing force that is appearing as everything. So this is quite a different kind of practice from meditation, from the idea of residing as the witness 
until you know that consciousness is the condition of all conditions, right? This is not simply being aware. This is embrace. See, I embrace you. Then I know you, and in so knowing you, I know myself. I know the nurturing force that is appearing as everything then. It is not merely to be aware of you as some sort of conscious, aloof <laughs> Buddha personality. What I'm saying is that that was made up. The mindfulness of Buddhism means exactly that. It is mindfulness. <laughs> you know, my mind is full of you. This mind is made for my connection with you. These two bodies, connected, have to function together, you know? And then, of course, there's the human in intimacy, there's the male-female union. God's method on earth, the male-female connection by which new life comes, you know? Even little babies. God and sex is one, are one. The power of life itself, you see? Now, I'm not talking necessarily about uh, same-sex or opposite-sex relationship, because we are all male-female. But however, whether it's same-sex or opposite-sex intimacy, this mind is for that connection. Mindfulness, mindfulness. <laughs> I become one with, absorbed with. Right? It is not to be celibate and aware of my desire, see? It's to function as desire, function as connection, right? is yoga, is the religious life. Right? Same with this, uh, I was in Israel last week, and uh, because the people there, all over the Middle East, such a need, such sincere people, Islamic or Jewish or Christian or just regular people having a trying to survive in a secular life they want to feel something they want to feel their connection so in our conversation there uh, up came the this idea you see we were talking about love thy neighbor as thyself and how do we do that? First, I must be sensitive to my own self, my own embodiment. If I'm sensitive here through a yoga practice, there's a chance that I can be sensitive to another in that order, you see? Strength receiving through my inhale, exhale, my asana, strength receiving, allows for strength receiving in the outer polarity, one to another. There it is, you see? The power of life comes in. The nurturing force comes in so powerful that it might even create motherhood and fatherhood. And poof, there it is. It is yoga. The nurturing force of life enters from the source to the scene. So we came up with this thing, love thy neighbors thyself. Ah, who said that? Oh, that's right. It was that, that Jewish yoga teacher, a Jewish yoga master said that in his society. Love thy neighbors thyself. You know, there it is. It's yoga instruction. So, the Buddha was a yogi, and Jesus was a yogi, for sure, <laughs> you know? Uh, later came the abstractions of doctrine, of text, and the hierarchy that holds that text, and turns it into abstraction and the effort without yoga to get to those lovely ideas. And that we see that it doesn't work. What a misery it's created on the planet, and we're still working that through, aren't we? These, you know, these desperate struggles of humanity with all their belief systems. And as soon as anyone starts this ancient wisdom religious practice of direct intimacy with reality, then it doesn't matter anymore. Suddenly national identity is not as important <laughs> as your identity with nurturing reality. Suddenly your religious identity isn't that important compared to your identity as life itself. But the paradox of that 
when you bring a yoga practice to Christianity or Buddhism or Islam or to Judaism, it's suddenly the sublime ideals of those expressions become your possibility. You feel them. See, and this was the point that our teacher made, Krishnamacharya, he said, yoga is the means by which you realize the ideals of text. And it's a beautiful thing to understand. If you've been inspired by anything in meaning, then what we do is take up a yoga practice. It's the practicum, you know, the practical means of realizing what we have responded to. So that's what I'd like to suggest to you, that you learn this basic practice of strength receiving, inhale, exhale, whole body prayer to reality that is nothing but a nurturing force, and then take it on. I would like you to do this, what you see here, what you learn today, and do it every day for seven minutes a day, starting tomorrow. Right? And you remember, have a look carefully at what this is, what the method was, what the, the tantra, what the yoga is, what the practical response to religious inspiration is, and then do that for yourself, for yourself without needing a computer or a book or a DVD or even a teacher, just you in your own home, in your own beautiful place, in your own beautiful embodiment. You know? Nurturing force of reality of this universe has arrived as this, as this heartbeat, breath and sex. This is not a spiritual statement. This is not even poetry, you know? This is math. This is, this is the fact of it. I am a flower blooming in my own garden, and so are you, and so are you. You know? You are an utterly unique and beautiful individual. There is only one of you on the planet. You know? And this is not poetry either. This is science. <laughs> Scientifically the case, there is no one human being that resembles any other. Everyone is utterly unique. There is no fingerprint the same. You know? There is no need to end this individuality. Everyone is utterly beautiful. So the nurturing source of reality has arrived as this extreme intelligence that is you, and you, and you, and you, right? and me. And my yoga now begins as my participation in this given wonder that I am, that you are, that everybody is on this whole planet Earth. And you do this, and you will realize the wonderful things that have been in, expressed in text from about 500 BC onwards. Right? The Buddha was a yogi. And so was Jesus. <laughs> Take up the practice, do it actually and naturally, not obsessively, do it for yourself, in your own bedroom, and see what happens. So this is the sincerity that I'm, from my teachers to you, from a Krishnamacharya and UG Krishnamurti, my, these essential source scholars who I was privileged to um, Spent, have a friendship with, and um, this is what I offer you, this, this ancient uh, religious practice that anybody can do, no matter what your national, religious, racial background, anybody can do this. Right. So we were working together, and we're still working together, and I want to offer this bed of tantric sound, this transformative sound, as the context in which we do our practice this evening. So, can we please, and 
I want to do a little sound and then I, we begin the instruction. We'll just sit for a moment and... Let me do a little blessing chant. Om Gananam Twa Ganapatim Ganapati Gum Havamahe Gavim Gavinam Upama Shravastamam Jestarajam Brahmanam Brahmanas Pata Anasrinvan Otif He Shirashadanam Shri Maha Ganapatahe Namaha Om Sahana Babatu Sahana Punaktu Sahaviryam Karathavahai Tejas Vinabadhi Tamastu Mabid Vishabahai Om Shanti 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 And to all of our teachers everywhere who have made this meeting possible. Sri Krishna Vagisha Yatishvarabhyam Samprapta Chak Krankana Basya Saram Sri Nut Narangendrayato Samapitasvam Sri Krishna Mayam Guru Vayamide Vahote Kartike Masse Shatatara Kritodayam Yoga Charyam Krishna Mayam Guru Vayamahambaje Shri Krishna Macharya Namaha Om
one um, principle of practice is for there to be a transition from your regular daily activity. Just a little transition like we just had, maybe not that long in your daily, but just a little pause, you know, maybe some silence, maybe some music, maybe some chanting, something from your own cultural background. Just a pause and then the asana begins. So we've done that so beautifully. Thank you so much. Thank you. From your ancestors to us. Thank you. Please could everybody stand up. I want you to stand with your feet parallel, slightly apart, like hip width apart. And if you just do this little thing, I want you to rock between your heels and your toes through the balls of your feet and just feel all the, something like 36 bones or something in the foot, all active, right? And then just settle down as a whole platform, right? Good. Now I want you to do this really, really simple thing. Just inhale, see the hands and exhale. Um, come down, just like that, good. And inhale, come up, right up. See the arms and exhale. Listen to your exhale. Inhale, come up. And listen to this. Yeah, and just once more, inhale, come up. And beautiful. Thank you. Now that's the first principle that the body movement is the breath movement, underline is. The breath movement is the body movement, vice versa. As the body moves, the breath moves. Right? Now everyone has a strong exhale, I can hear it all over the world. I go and I hear everyone in most countries, <laughs> strength, male strength, you know. <laughs> but what's missing is the receptivity. You know, I went to Rome last week and all the male statues, you know, big proud, God realizing males. Where are the women? And there wasn't one woman in the Vatican. There were no women statues. How can that be? And then I did find a woman. She was St. Catherine, this beautiful marble statue by the castle that protects the Pope. But she was like this. And so there you go. That's what we inherited, you see. No receptivity, the feminine. And now we're going to bring them into balance in our own lives, in our own embodiment, and have this intimacy, you see, that's been taken off us by abstraction. See? It's the direct practice. So here's how to do it. This is the secret. <laughs> the ancient religious secret. Inhale. Strength. I want you to listen to that exhale that receives inhale. I'll just do it once, listen. It's the same breath that your body uses in sleep to refresh the system. You don't sleep like this. Could everybody do that? Just sniff air through the nostrils and go. All right, so it's not that. Now I want you to tuck the chin in and make a little soft sound in the back of the throat on the inhale it's called ujjayi breath, the same breath that you use, the body uses in sleep. And just see that you can hear that. Listen to the exhale, because that comes nicely, and duplicate the sound of the exhale on the inhale. Beautiful, beautiful, Bob. See if you can get that throat, the larynx is the controlling center, not the nostrils. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Now, with the arms, as we did, inhale, come up. And good. Now just three or four breaths like that. The body movement is the breath movement. Good. Excellent. Hear that sound? And beautiful. Beautiful. Proud of you. Fantastic. 
Please teach everybody in Iran how to do that. Please. Inhale, exhale. That's all. Already yoga is happening, you see. In the mosques, whole body prayer with breath. Yeah. In terms of world religion, the most yogic, Islam. Just put the breath in, above to below, you know. Let the women do it. Everybody do it. Yeah. One more. Fantastic. So nice. This is what I want you to do at home for seven minutes a day for the next three months. You promise? Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Now, next principle. You got that really beautifully. It's above to below, this inhale, exhale, right? I want you to put one hand here, one hand on the lower abdominal, and inhale into this upper hand here. Exhale, flatten the abdominals with your fingertips. Inhale, upper chest. Even feel the back of the ribs expanding. Exhale, flatten the abdominals. Beautiful. Now that just feel that relationship of above to below. Strength receiving. All right, thank you. Now one last principle, one, two, three points I'm giving you in terms of this yoga asana, is that the body and breath move as one, but the breath initiates the movement and ends the movement. If this is the body movement, this is the breath. So inhale, then move. And I'm still inhaling when the hands come together. Then a little pause, start the exhale, and then move. Right, you got it? Body, breath. Please try. Inhale, come up. A little pause. Exhale, arms come down. Flatten the abdominals in and up. Right, now not too slow. Don't get too careful. Please, just have a good breathe. Please don't get too spiritual on me. Just, you're already spirit, you see? The body, the source reality, nurturing source has arrived as this extreme intelligence of breath. So have a good breathe. Beautiful. Not too careful. Just go, you know? Good, just have a good breathe, above to below. Nice. Inhale, see the hands above, see the hands. See the hands and exhale. One more. Good. Love it. Thank you so much. Now, just a little technical point with the posture. I want you to see if you can actually do this work of bringing the hands together like a prayer mudra here. Like heels together, but hands soft, wrists, elbows, especially shoulders soft. I don't want that, you know. It's very strong to come up and pause. It takes a lot of strength, but I want the strength to be soft. Strength that is receiving, right, is hatha, is the tantra. So please try that. Inhale, come up. Nice and soft, soft. Drop the shoulders, drop them. Good, and exhale. Thank you. And all the principles applied. Inhale, come up. Nice soft shoulders. Start the exhale before you move. Yay. Two more breaths. This is the transformative yoga. This is the tantra that I'm talking about. Direct intimacy with reality. That is nothing but nurturing force nurturing source, God, that has arrived as all ordinary conditions. Participate in the ordinary intimacies and then you will know the nurturing source, the compassion that the traditions value so much. This is the compassionate gesture to yourself and then everybody else. This is the compassion that Buddha spoke of. Beautiful, thank you. Next exhale, hands to the heart.
Nice. Little resting breath. Thank you. Now inhale, arch, come up, right up. Pause. This time I want you to take a full exhale, come down, deeply down. And pause. Inhale, arms bring you back up. And let me hear your ujjayi inhale. Up you come. See the hands above? Pause. Deep exhale, go down. Deeply down. And pause out. Soften the knees, soften the neck. Inhale, arms bring you back up. Right up. See the hands above? A little pause. Let me hear the inhale. Exhale, forward bend down. Soften the knees, soften the neck. As low as you can go without strain. Inhale, come up. Let me hear the ujjayi inhale. Strength receiving. Two more breaths. Soften the knees. Soften the neck. I want you to soften here. Inhale, up you come. Good. And a little pause. Exhale, forward bend. And stay down now in the forward bend. Soft knees, soft neck. Create a nice relationship between your fingers and toes. It's the same body and on inhale ease the forward bend if your hands don't reach the floor that's fine just wrap them gently around the backs of the legs on exhale deepen the forward bend on inhale ease the forward bend exhale deepen inhale ease nice exhale deepen forward bend feel the tummy squishing in and up on the exhale feel the rib cage expanding on the inhale I want to hear your breath the same breath ratio that you did in the movement all right good and inhale up you come again next inhale come up see the hands above exhale hands to the heart that place where all opposites are meeting where left meets right where above meets below with the inhale meets the exhale at the heart, you see. Good. Please come to the front of your mat. I like that. Inhale, arch, come up, right up. See the hands, pause, exhale, forward bend, come down, deeply down, soften the knees and neck. Stride one leg back three and a half feet. Inhale, come up, right up, see the hands. The back foot flat and comfortable. Back foot diagonal to the forward direction. And exhale, come down, all the way down. Pause after exhale, drop the neck, drop the head, inhale, arms bring you back up. Right up, see the arms above, soft shoulders. Exhale, forward bend, come down, deeply down. Abdominal in and up. Soften the neck, arms bring you back up. Right up. See the hands, soft shoulders, start the exhale before you move. Down you come. And that lifts the abdominals closer to the back of the spine. Inhale, come up. Excellent, bro. Deep exhale, forward bend down. Pause out after exhale. One more, inhale, come up. And now I want you to stay up there about three four breaths in the same breath ratio see the hands i want you to have the palms softly together if you just try that it just as an alternative that's fine soft shoulders let me hear your inhale strength receiving and on your next exhale deep forward bend come down deeply down scoop the tummy in and up and stride forward Drop the neck, inhale, arms bring you back up. Beautiful, and hands to the hridaya. This. Thank you. I just want you to observe, there's a bit of a tendency to, you sit up, you're down here like this, and then you go, oh my God, and you go, oh, try to, you, you, you want the neck to bring you up, you know, the head's trying to bring you up. I want you to do it like this. Like an eagle in flight, come up. The arms, the chest, the breath brings you up. Let the neck be comfortable. 
It's called Jalandhara Bandha. The head surrendered to the heart, you see. And then into a back arch, like that. So we'll try it next time around. Inhale, come up. Arch. Exhale, forward bend, go down. Deeply down, soften the knees and neck. Stride one leg back, three and a half feet. Inhale, arch, come up. Right up. Equal weight through both feet, please. And exhale, forward bend. Now just move, have a good breathe. Don't be too careful. Just breathe as the whole body. Inhale, come up, right up. See the arms above. Pause and start the exhale before you move. Abdominals in and up, it's called Bandha. After exhale, two more breaths. Feel the legs moving, keep the legs comfortable. Even the legs are kind of inhaling in a mysterious kind of way. The base of the body receiving. All right, now stay there in Virabhadrasana. Stay in the upward position for four breaths in the same approximate breath ratio that you achieved in the movement. Hands softly together, elbows, wrists, fingers soft, shoulders soft. See the hands. Allow yourself to, yeah, that. Com comfort. I want to hear your inhale and exhale. Do the work. No struggle. Equal weight through both feet. Good. Thank you. On your next exhale, deep forward bend, come down. Pause. Stride forward. In the bandha. And inhale, come up. Hands to the heart. Good. Now I want you to practice the breath and movement and the principles that I gave you. Be really impeccable about it this time. Just like this. Inhale, come up. This time Jalandhara, the chin tucked into the lifting chest. Exhale, arms down. Just that simple movement. And pause. One, two, three. Inhale up the front. Pause. Exhale, arms down the side. Just really get these principles of movement and breath in. Inhale, come up. Good. Now this time do a forward bend. Exhale, come down, all the way down. Now soften the knees, soften the neck. Keep the knee bend in as the arms bring you back up. Inhale up. Good. And the chin, I want this, that bundle there this time. And exhale down, deeply down. Pause. Let the arms and the breath bring you up and the neck relaxed as you come right up. Inhale up. Good. It's a new idea for you, but it's very nice. And exhale down. Deeply down. Pause. And inhale, come up. Whole body prayer, you see? Nice. And hands to the heart, exhale. Good. I like that. Thank you. Good. Inhale, arch, come up. This time an arch. Pause. Exhale, deep forward bend, go down. Deeply down. Walk back into three and a half feet back into this position. Adha Mukha Swanasana. Inhale, knees to the floor, come into this Chakra Vakasana. Inhale, knees to the floor, arch. Exhale back to Adha Mukha Swanasana. Exhale. Pause. And inhale, Chakra Vakasana. Just really simple. These simple breath and movement. Exhale. Flatten the abdominals in and up after exhale. Inhale into cat. Exhale into down dog, they like to call it in the West. Pause. Inhale, cat pose. Chakravakasana. Let me hear the inhale. Exhale into Adha Mukha Svanasana, the abdominals in and up after exhale. One more. Inhale into cat. So simple. So profound. 
exhale into down dog and just stay there now spread the fingers in all directions weight through the front of the hands as much as the heel of the hands let the legs be comfortable it's fine to have a little knee bend in there and just push a little more the heels to the floor without straining and just hang there above to below I want to hear your inhale your ujjayi strength receiving you see above to below inhale into the upper chest exhale flatten the abdominals don't lock the elbows keep the elbows safe good chin tucked into the lifting chest if the breath leaves you if you don't have the breath there anymore it's time to ease up the breath is the guru or the gauge to the asana you do the asana for the breath if you find that the breath capability is not there then ease up all right and inhale into cat pose arch exhale into child pose good and have a nice rest for a moment just surrender your spine to the floor have a nice rest we say Ishvara Pranidhana the surrender of your spine to the universe the prana of the spine the prana of your life is the same prana as the universe of course so you surrender to it that's what one description of yoga is that Ishvara Pranidhana the surrender of the life energy of your body to the life energy of the universe good now a little simple movement I want you to now inhale stand on the knees and bring the arms right up into the Jalandhara see the chin tucked in right up standing on the knees come right up on the knees right up exhale back to child pose right down low, low. inhale to this Bhujang Asana come through like this abdominals on the floor and a strong exhale stay make the tummy work inhale increase the back arch exhale deep crouch come all the way back inhale arms to the roof come up right up a little pause deep exhale down inhale to Bhujang Asana let me hear the inhale hands at the base of the rib cage exhale stay inhale increase the back arch good deep crouch exhale come back good and move it inhale come up into Jalandhara pause exhale child pose great inhale into Cobra Bhujang Asana deep exhale stay feel the abdominals working no weight through the hands just fingers light on the floor increase the back arch with breath exhale child pose come back good one more inhale up you come the whole body moving as breath exhale child pose pause inhale into Cobra exhale stay inhale stay good and deep crouch child pose rest Bakash would you like to just play if you want to just say yeah 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 why not cool. and just resting nice rest again surrender the spine even just surrender the spine the whole body to the floor good practice at home 
your seven minute promise, just rest like this for a moment. I want to see you on the kitchen floor after work, come home, do your breathing, and then just rest like this. Good. And please lie on your back. Lie on the back, holding your knees, actually. One hand on each knee. I want you to inhale, bring the arms to the floor behind the head, feet to the roof. Yay. And exhale, hold the knees, bring the knees into the chest. And pause, and repeat that. Inhale, come up. If you like, you can point the toes at your forehead. Exhale, hold the knees. And pause. Now just flow with that, please. Inhale, come up, pause. Exhale, hold the knees. Inhale, come up. Nice. Exhale. Beautiful. Don't strain, just inhale, come up to just no straining and exhale, hold the knee. Good. Once more, inhale, come up. And exhale. Beautiful. Right over left. Right. Right over left. Chin slightly tucked in. Exhale, hold the knees. Two more breaths. One more. Nice. And rest, holding the knees. Rest. Simple. This time I want you to, on inhale, put the feet on the floor, close to the body. Lift the back off the floor, arch to the neck and shoulders, on inhale. Inhale, come up, lift right up. No, no, no. I'm straight. Just a simple inhale up. There you go. Exhale, come down, hold the knees. Pause. And again, inhale, arch the back, come up, right up, lift right up. And pause. Exhale, come down, hold the knees. Push the breath out. Nice. Two more breaths. Lengthen the pause after inhale. Start the exhale before you move. Maybe for now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Once more, inhale, come up. This time, stay up there. Four breaths. Four, inhale, pause, exhale, flatten the abdominals. Inhale into the upper chest. Exhale, flatten the base. Very nice. One more inhale. One more strong exhale. One more inhale into the upper chest and pause. Exhale, come down, hold the knees, rest. Good, and a nice rest. at the base of the rib cage. Oh, sorry, the base at the hips. Hands on the floor at the hips. Yep. Good. Now, most of you can try a shoulder stand. Right? On exhale, you're going to come up. So you'll inhale, do nothing. Exhale, push the hands on the floor and bring the legs to the roof. Right? On exhale, come up. Yes, and hands on the lower back. 
give you a good press, a press on the floor. And up you come. Good. The hands on the lower back. Good. And you're there. Inhale into the upper chest. Let me hear it. Inhale, upper chest and pause. Exhale, flatten the abdominals. Inhale into the upper chest. Pause. Exhale, flatten the abdominals in and up. Pause out. Inhale, upper chest. Exhale, flatten the base. Inhale into the upper chest. Pause. Exhale. Good. Two or three more breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Great. On your next exhale, I want you to lower one knee, just bend the knee, lower it down to the ear. Exhale all the way down. Pause, inhale, bring it all the way up again. Good. And the other leg down, exhale. Pause, inhale, come up. Beautiful. Exhale. Pause, out. Inhale, come up. Beautiful. Two or three more breaths. Exhale, both knees down. Exhale, and simply roll down a big comfortable inhale, roll down, finish. Inhale. Hold the knees, hold the knees, and rest. Beautiful. Hold the knees, and rest. Beautiful. way to rest. After your inversion, a significant little pause. Put the legs up like this. It's carrying on. It, it's a, an inversion. It's very good for you. Yeah, just resting. Just rest. Now stretching out, roll over onto your abdominal. And the counter pose to the shoulder stand. Very a simple back arch. Bhujang Asana, hands at the base of the rib cage, forehead on the floor. Right back there, yeah, forehead on the floor. And on inhale, arch up. But don't use your hands, just the, let the breath bring you up and exhale roll down if I said no weight through the hands no weight through the hands just the fingers light and up you come inhale up pause exhale roll down two more breaths inhale come up and pause Exhale, roll down. Good. Inhale, come up. Don't force the neck back. Exhale, roll down. Thank you. And one more. Inhale, come up and stay. Exhale, stay. Inhale, increase the back arch. You can have your hands down, but just, just light. That feeling there. Good. Thank you. And next exhale, deep crouch into child pose. Come back. Exhale back. 
Good. Resting breath. And inhale, come through again. Bhujang Asana into Cobra. Inhale. This time, exhale, head to the floor, go down. Bend the knees, hold the ankles. Inhale, arch off the floor. Inhale, arch, come up. A stronger back arch. So inhale, come up. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, come up. Right up and pause. Exhale, roll down again. All the way. Inhale, roll up. Let me hear the inhale. Exhale, roll down. All the way down. And inhale, come up. And this time stay, eyes closed, no struggle, just hang there above to below, inhale, pause, strong exhale, flatten the base. And exhale, come down, inhale, Bhujangasana, exhale, child pose. Okay, and sitting up please, sit this way. I want you, one heel in the perineum like this. One heel like this. Thank you Vakash, thank you Prabhash. I want you to reach out and hold this inner foot, like so. If that's not comfortable, hold the leg somewhere, anywhere. Right? Now, you're going to expand the chest. Inhale, come up like this and see this hand. Good. Now exhale, put it around the body. Let it go to wherever it goes. And inhale, ease that twist. Inhale, ease. Exhale, deepen. Abdominals in and up and pause. Inhale, ease. Exhale, deepen. Good. Inhale, ease the twist. Pause. Exhale, deepen. Thank you. Inhale, ease. Eyes closed, looking up. Yeah, now no struggle, but let the inhale be at least 50% of the posture. I want to hear your inhale into the whole body as you ease the twist. On exhale, deepen the twist, pause after exhale. So there's some perceptible movement there. Good. Inhale, ease the twist. Exhale, deepen the twist. Good. On your next inhale, come out of that twist into this Jalandara. See, the chin tucked into the lifting chest and stretch way past the foot. On exhale, pause. Inhale, arms bring you back up, right up. Chin tucked into the lifting chest. Start the exhale before you move, remember? And down you come. Exhale all the way. Pause. Arms bring you back up, inhale. Big receiving inhale, let me hear it. Pause. Deep exhale, come down. Abdominals in and up. Pause out after exhale. Inhale up, you come again. Right up. Pause. Once more. Deep exhale down. Thank you. Now stay. Four breaths. Inhale. Ease the forward bend. Exhale. Deepen the foot. Over the knee, love. Head over the knee. Yeah. Soften the knee. Don't force anything. Inhale. Ease. Exhale. Go a little deeper. You don't need to pull on the arms. Just very gently. Feel free to even bend the knee because that's going to take you into a deeper forward bend. What you can do is ease that okay. and then you'll come down deep. Yay! See much more work there in the abdominal, which is the point of the forward bend. 
Inhale, ease, expand the chest. Let me hear your inhale. Exhale, deep and forward bend. Inhale, ease. Exhale, go deeper. Nice, so some perceptible movement is there in the posture as you breathe. Inhale, ease. Exhale, deepen. Thank you. On your next inhale, come right up again into Jalandhara. Heart lifted to the forehead, hands to the heart. Exhale. Good. And simply a resting breath. Soft hands. These hands so soft that you could hold a flower in the hands without crushing the flower. Beautiful. So soft. Beautiful. The cave in the hands associated with the cave in the heart. That's the place where all opposites originate, you see, in the khrid. Khrid. It's an ancient word, khrid, the heart. Khr, to give, d, to receive. Khrid, the heart. The place where, when your mother and father surrendered to each other, in came one cell. Spirit took form. From the source to the seen reality, which are one, of course. And here you are, the flower blooms. Good, and change legs. Hold the inner foot. Inhale, lift up high, lift right up. Pause, deep exhale, come around. Let the arm come around to wherever it goes. Eyes closed, looking up. Inhale, ease the twist. Exhale, deepen. Good. Inhale, ease and pause. Exhale, deepen. Great, you're doing really well. I'm proud of you. Inhale, ease, expand the chest. Let the inhale be half the equation, even more than half. Receive the inhale. Exhale, twist. Inhale, ease the twist. Exhale from the base of the body. Abdominals come in and up as you exhale. Good. And on your next inhale, up you come out of the twist, the head bowed to the lifting heart, pause, start the exhale before you move, deep forward bend, reach past the foot as much as you can, pause, and arms bring you back up, inhale, right up, and pause, and exhale, reaching for the foot, reaching past the foot if that's where your hands go, pause, and big receiving inhale, come up again, into Jalandhara, and once more, exhale down. Deeply down, pause, once more, inhale, come up, and pause, and exhale, deep forward bend, come down, and stay down. Now, now you can hold the foot or leg, and perceptible movement as you breathe, inhale, ease the forward bend, exhale, deepen. Inhale, ease. Exhale, deepen. Inhale, ease the forward bend and pause. Exhale, deepen forward bend. Nice. Once more. Inhale, ease. Remember to soften the neck. Let the head drop. Inhale, ease forward bend. Expand the chest. Exhale, deepen. Good. And once more, inhale, come right up. And exhale, hands to the khrud, the heart, where all opposites are meeting, where left meets right, where above meets below, where the inhale meets the exhale, where strength is receiving. See, khrud. The perfect union of the male-female qualities of life. 
strength that is receptive. Just as a tree has a great trunk, great strength, and yet resolves into the soft foliage that is utterly soft and utterly receptive. This is the quality of your life, of all life. Strength receiving, yin and yang. Inhale, exhale, above and below, left and right. Hatha, you see, hatha yoga, asana, is for this participation in the heart, the hrid, the nurturing source, the first cell of life that arrived when you arrived. Nurturing source, mother, father, the substance of all appearance, this utterly caring, powerful force, source reality, this extreme intelligence is the ordinary condition of life, your ordinary breath, heartbeat, relatedness of every kind through which the nurturing force of life flows into all relationships. You are completely loved and cared for, completely. And you love and you care, this is the natural state. Thank you, and just let's, sitting legs crossed, resting. Just resting, sitting resting. I'll teach you this little vibration, this, this tantra. It's like this, Om Shri, please, could you try? Om Shri. Now when, when Om is pronounced, it's a O, like, you just whisper this word to you, open, it's like that O, it's like you're about to kiss somebody, O, O, like that. Now it's three O's and then an M and then silence. Whenever Om is pronounced, silence, before the next consonant comes, like, O, M, Shreem, like that. Please try. Om Beautiful. And engage the base, the abdominals working, see? Om Shreem. Try. Om Shreem. Beautiful. Inhale. Once more. Om From the base of the body vibrating. Om Love it. Inhale again. Om Inhale. Feel how that vibrates right through your whole body. Folk can use sound from your own background, your own culture, the language of your own familiarity, of course. But for this occasion, let's use this sound. I'm now going to extend that mantra. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Please try. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Good. Inhale. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Let me hear it. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Beautiful. You inhale. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Please. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. 
Aham. Good. This time lift the arms up. Inhale. And put a circle around the body with that mantra. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Inhale, come up. Circle around the body. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Inhale, Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Om. Once more, inhale. And hands to the heart this time. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Good. Yeah. You do something really simple, hands, wrists on the knees, fingertips perhaps, first fingertip touching the thumb, thumb tip like that, so simple. Now I want you to do this, look up, all the way up, how high can you look? And now without rounding out the back, I want you to look all the way down again. Good, look all the way up. Keeping the chest high, look all the way down and see how close you can get the forehead to the heart without being uncomfortable. Inhale, come up. Without rounding out the back and look all the way down. Good. Now just keep the head down there. This time inhale into the upper chest. A little pause. And exhale, flatten the abdominals. Good. Inhale into the upper chest. And a little pause. Exhale, flatten the, the base. Inhale into the upper chest. I like that. Keeping the chin tucked in. Without any discomfort whatsoever. Feel free to lower the forehead to the heart. To surrender the head to the heart. Just Now without struggle, just a few more gentle breaths like that. Feel this above to below principle in stationary pose. No struggle, a little work, but not a struggle. See, in yoga and hatha yoga, we surrender the head to its source. First, there was one cell of life, the hridaya. A flower bloomed, the whole body bloomed from the heart. That's why they say the heart, the hrid, is the seat of mind, from where the mind arises. In yoga we simply acknowledge the heart as our source, nurturing heart. Nurturing source flowing through the whole body. Creating the whole body, even creating the mind, see? So we commit our mind, our thinking process to the heart and mindfulness. Mindfulness, the connection to all objects, the connection of me to you, mindfulness. And you might notice the strength in the bodily base right now, you see? The head is surrendered to the heart and the base is cooperating with the heart. As you exhale, abdominals lifted in and up. Strength of base, in and up. Participating in the heart, in the nurturing source of life. This mother love. When I say mother, it includes father, because without father there is no mother. Mother, father. This deep, caring, natural love of life. Participating in that as breath in all relationships. 
strength receiving within and without. This is the purpose of our yoga. Good, thank you. And now just resting up. Resting up. Just resting. Simply resting. Not looking, not requiring, not meditating, just resting. Good. Shreem Shri Hai Namaha. Place that sound right in the base of your body, right down in the perineum. It's called nyasa. Place it with me. Om Shreem Shri Hai Namaha. Inhale and place it in the lower abdominal towards the back of the spine. Place. Om Shreem Shri Hai. Namaha. Inhale. Place it in the upper abdomen towards the back of the spine. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Excellent. Inhale. Place it in the heart area. Anahata. Om Namaha. Inhale, you notice a shreem, it's like a drill, shreem, into the throat. Om shreem, shri hai namaha. Inhale, forehead. Om shreem, shri hai namaha. Inhale. Crown, Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. This time lift the arms up, inhale, and bring the hands to the Hridaya. Om Shri Shri Hai Namaha. Beautiful. I want you to touch your physical heart. Touch it on the left. Place that vibration. Om Shreem down a bit. Om Shreem Shreem Namaha. Please. Om Shreem Shreem Namaha. Now in the very center in the called Chashumna, the Anahata, the subtle heart in the middle. Om Shreem Shri Ai Namaha. Now the causal heart, the Hridaya, the source heart, the nurturing source on the right. Om Shri Shri Hai Nama. The physical heart on the left. Om Shri The subtle heart, Anahata in the middle, Chakra it is. Om Shri and the heart on the right. Oh. Lift the arms up, inhale. Fingertips to the heart. Oh. Good. Now I want you to visualize a flower, like say nine petals blooming from your heart from the Hridaya. It's easy to visualize this because we all know it so well. We know a flower, see? Now you're not exactly a flower, you're a human being. 
but you are certainly the wonder of life. The extreme intelligence, beauty, individuality is here. And indeed there are structures like flowers inside the body, the movement of energy. And I want you to see this bloom and see the petals, see the tips of the petals, see where they are, be in all ordinary conditions, and then the heart pranas, the love pranas flow. They're already flowing, of course, because we're here. We're already completely loved and nurtured. This is the fact that we can depend upon. In our yoga, we are merely, sheerly participating in this love of life, nurturing force of life that flows through the whole body and into all relationships. That's what we're doing. You are completely loved and cared for. Your daily yoga practice is your easy participation in this nurturing. You live in a field of nurturing, Mother Earth. And may everyone here on Earth know this quickly. Observe the bloom of life blooming in all directions. Be in the unfolding, be in the tips of the petals. And the heart pranas flow. Prana, another word for heart. The movement of heart, the movement of nurturing, prana, the utter power of motherhood, fatherhood, of all existence. This unfathomable depth and intelligence that is you and me, this life. Good, and would you lie down, rest completely, Shavasana, just complete rest now. Just give yourself over, have a nice rest. Would you please try this, rest your attention in the crown of the head. Let your attention be in the crown. I want you to perhaps visualize a bloom in the crown. Yeah, let me do it.
and rest your whole body in the flow of life.
what you're doing but sitting resting is the whole body just sitting resting just do what you're doing but sitting as the whole body resting Would you put the wrists on the knees, first finger and thumb tip touching, just finally look up all the way up and look down, stretching the whole spine and look up and look down, look up 
again look down and please continue, continue to look down, eyes closed, inhale upper chest, exhale feel the strength in the bodily base once more, inhale from above, expand the chest, the whole body receiving, exhale from the abdominals in and up, inhale into the upper chest, a little pause now after inhale, exhale, flatten the base. Just a few breaths. No struggle. forward a little bit like this yeah. drop there yeah yeah there you go yeah, feel free to yeah good. 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 just a little more yeah, great strength at the base and easing up, easing up, lighter breaths and resting again.
Yay. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Done. Beautiful practice. Good learning. Good Tantra. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody, for your time and attention. Now, seven minutes a day, you just get that into your daily routine. Then it can be seven plus if you want it to, but seven minutes does something, really. If you stand on your, in your bedroom and go, inhale, exhale for seven minutes, see what happens to your life. That's all I'm asking. Strength receiving, within and without, is a practical outcome. You don't even have to think of the outcome. Don't look for enlightenment, please. The looking implies the absence. If you're looking for something, it means you don't have it, so don't look. My teacher used to say, stop looking, start living. This is living, participating in the nurturing force of reality. It's so simple, it's easily done. Just do your yoga. There could well be an outcome that you could describe in terms of enlightenment. There is one nurturing force appearing as all, as, as all. <laughs> you could say that, but you don't have to look for it. But you might feel it as, it's act, as the actuality of things. Expressed so beautifully here, thank you. But expressed so beautifully there in your embodiment, in your breath, in your life. You have it. It's in your hands. Thank you. Thanks so much. Good. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Seven minutes.